Hey guys, welcome back to another video. How are you guys holding up this week? Because me personally, I'm having a really, really hard time over the past week and a half. And honestly, it's not so much about rates and the market and the diesel prices. It's about the mental and emotional deterioration that happens. I really love this business, as you guys know, but it definitely takes everything and then some out of you, especially right now. Anyway, guys, since it's the end of the week and also end of the month, let's take a look at what happened in the freight market last week and what we can expect next week. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I teach about the trucking industry, the freight market with a heavy focus on the spot market because we are spot carriers. And basically I try to make sense of the current situation. So if this is a topic that interests you, feel free to subscribe. We have a pretty cool growing community here. Now also a quick reminder before I forget, this Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to be doing another live Q&A about the trucking industry, the freight market, what's going on. So if you're interested or if you have any questions, you know where to find me. All right, so let's take a look at what happened with capacity, how many carriers came in, how many left. Let's take a look at volumes and rejections, diesel prices, and what all of that did to the situations with flatbeds, reefers, and dry vans. Ready? Let's go. Now, before we actually go to the board, I have an article that I wanted to share with you that came out yesterday by Freight Waves, where they state that it seems like the freight industry is bouncing back. They talk about capacity, volumes, rejections, and we will look at all of those in a minute. But for now, I just want to read this small portion. Capacity has been bleeding out of the market. Carriers, large and small, have been leaving the industry, meaning there are fewer trucks available to haul freight. Trucking companies have different operating costs, but none of them can survive long on low rates. Throughout this year, truckload spot rates have hovered between $1.50 and as high as $2.10 per mile. Meanwhile, the average break-even cost per mile for truckload ranges from $1.56 to $1.90 per mile, according to a recent JP Morgan study. So an interesting view, and we're going to break it all down right now. Okay, so we always start with capacity, so let's take a look. Well, again, reminder, red line is the involuntary revocations, green is new authorities, then we have the blue line, which is voluntary revocations, and the orange line, that is reinstatements. Now, the black one is the net change in carrier population, considering those that came into the industry or reinstated their authority and those that actually lost their authority. So as of last week, we lost 521 carriers net, which is the highest amount since around week 27, which was around July 3rd. Now, an interesting pattern that I realized is that since around week 30 right here, voluntary revocations have been climbing up. So in terms of that article that I shared with you guys, yeah, clearly carriers are leaving. More carriers are leaving than are entering the industry. And what's more important, more and more carriers are choosing to leave because most likely they simply cannot afford to stay in this business any longer. Now let's talk about the outbound tender volumes and outbound tender rejections. And I have good news for you here, guys, finally. So volumes, which is the blue line, show us general freight volume, not spot market volume. And the white line shows us tender rejections, how much of this total volume is getting rejected by contract carriers and pushed into the spot market. Rejections usually have a strong correlation with spot market rates. The higher the rejections, the higher the rates. So we can see that volumes have actually been climbing, which is really nice. And this is really important because the more volume, the more it soaks up that capacity. And the more capacity is soaked up, the more likely the rates will start going up. Now, even better news is that tender rejections, the white line is also following the same pattern. It is kind of going up skyrocketing over the past, since when was this? This was since the beginning of August. Well, actually it's since July 14th that rejection started going up. Currently, rejection rates are at 4.26, which means that 4.26% of the overall freight 
is actually getting rejected and pushed to the spot market. Now, this is not a big number, but this is the highest rejection rate we have seen in around six months. So at least there is some positive movement in the market. Now, if we look at the same chart, but week over week to see how much volumes on rejections changed, well, here it is. We can see that volumes actually increased by 2.2% since last week, which is great. And rejections increased by 9.5% since last week, which is even better. Hopefully they continue going up. So now let's take a look at spot versus contract, right? To see what contract carriers are getting in comparison to spot carriers. So the gap is increasing. Contract carriers are getting on average 79 cents more than those spot carriers. And this surprised me. Actually, what is surprising is the resiliency of the contract market. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen in the next few weeks and months. And finally, not such great news are diesel prices. So diesel prices, they did experience sort of a plateau for a minute. I mean, a plateau that was going up, but very slowly. And then we saw it skyrocket again. So currently diesel prices are at an average of $4 and I'll round up 48 cents per gallon, which is horrendous. And the worst part is that if we look at this, which shows us the different markets, we can see that everywhere diesel prices increased over the past week, except for Alexandria, Virginia and Baltimore, Maryland. So just to summarize everything that we have just viewed, yeah, it seems like the market is starting to come alive a little bit. And that's probably because of the peak season that is already happening in reality. But of course, all that progress is being offset by these ridiculous diesel prices. So the question now is when the heck will diesel prices stop going up and start going down? I mean, damn it, it's really annoying. If it's not one thing, then it's another. But you know what? Patience is in order. Let's breathe for a minute and see how this all affected the situation for flatbeds, reefers, and dry vans. Okay, starting with flatbeds, let's take a look at the spot volumes. Again, this is a chart that I get from FTR Intel. Um, so good news here. Uh, flatbed volumes on the spot market actually saw an increase as of last week, which is nice. Uh, they're not really following the five-year average, I would say inching closer to it, but yeah, an increase in volume is always good. The problem is, is that those increases in volume did not actually translate to the rate per mile posted for the flatbed. And the rate per mile for the flatbed is still going down. So currently the rate per mile is around $2.30 average, whereas we should be, according to the five-year average, at around $2.40. So there's a 10 cent difference. The good news with these rates is that we are really closely following that five year average, right? So from here on out, if the pattern continues, we should expect pretty much stability until around week 41, which is around October 9th. And from there on out, there's going to be another drop, stability and a small increase towards the end of the year. Now let's take a look at the DAT heat map for flatbeds to take a look where the good areas are. We have Spokane, Washington, Idaho, Oregon, and a little bit of Northern California. Something that I forgot to mention last week. Yes, these markets are hot. There are way more loads there than there are trucks, but they don't really translate to good rates across the board for flatbeds if they're stuck in one of these areas. Unfortunately, something I have realized is that if you're in one of these areas, you can get a really, really good rate per mile, especially if you're patient, but going to a dead area, for example, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, South Dakota, and so on. And of course, as always, there's still the South, Arkansas, Mississippi, parts of Tennessee, Alabama, etc. We know this, right? This kind of never changes, but something that I have experienced this week is that this area that's right on the border of Pennsylvania and Ohio, this can be an interesting area for flatbeds sometimes, at least from what I have experienced this week, you can get a good rate per mile from there. Now reefers and spot load volumes, good news here. Reefers saw another increase in volumes as of last week. And the best part about this, in my opinion, 
is the fact that we're following that five-year pattern, yeah, below it, but we're following it to a T, which makes predicting things a little bit easier if we continue following that pattern. Hopefully nothing starts changing. So we can expect that as of this week, I'll be showing you that next week, this week volumes increased again. Next week, there will be a decrease in volumes and then volumes will rise, kind of stabilize, rise a little bit more, go down during Thanksgiving week, and then go up again towards the end of the year, which is good. Now, in terms of reefer rates, we can see that reefer rates also went up, which is awesome. Currently, we are at $2.50 per mile average. Now, if you're thinking, hey, I'm not seeing those kinds of rates, well, I'm not either. But what happens is there are certain markets that have really good rates for reefers. So this is the average of everything, right? Average $2.50 per mile loaded. Now we should be around the $2.55 mark or so, but again, we are following that five-year pattern. So in the next two weeks or so, we can expect the rates to continue climbing slightly for reefers, followed by a downward pressure from around September 10th to October 31st or so, after which they will continue climbing until the end of the year with the exception of Thanksgiving. So hopefully we follow that pattern and see some relief. So now let's take a look at the general freight market, general volumes for reefers. Again, this is not the spot market, this is the freight market. So surprisingly, what we can see is that pretty much all of the West Coast has kind of died. There was either a decrease in volumes, which is the red parts, or no change, except for the Seattle, Pendleton, Oregon, and the Spokane, Washington areas. Now we saw some increases in volumes in Minnesota, Missouri, uh, Michigan, parts of Kentucky, Tennessee. We have the Orlando, Florida market. Yeah, there are some other increases in flat areas where there's not much volume to begin with. So not really an interesting map in terms of volumes. Now let's take a look at the tender rejections for reefers. So in terms of tender rejections, California saw a decrease. Idaho, Spokane, and the Portland, Oregon market saw an increase. Houston, Texas, Minnesota, which is nice. Georgia, Jacksonville, Florida, Tennessee, Kentucky, Iowa, Wisconsin, and oh, Oklahoma, parts of Arkansas, pretty much everywhere else it was, oh, Utah as well, whoops, um, pretty much everywhere else there was either a decrease in rejections or they kind of stayed the same. Now let's take a look at the DAT heat map to see what is going on today on the spot market. So on the spot market, we can see that Central California, the Bakersfield area, Idaho, the Pendleton, Oregon area, South Dakota, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Kansas, parts of Texas, um, Arkansas, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Indiana, Atlanta, Georgia. These are hot markets. The one thing I want you to remember when looking at this map is look at the surrounding areas, right? Because a market like Atlanta, Georgia, yeah, it's hot. It means that there are more loads than there are trucks, but the problem is the surrounding markets. If the surrounding markets are not red or orange, that means that people from the surrounding markets will be deadheading to the hot market and kind of diluting that load to truck ratio. Now, where do you have to go next week if you want to grab better opportunities with a reefer? So as a reminder, again, we're looking at a place with high volume, tall and as blue as possible high rejection rates because that means there is a ton of crap to choose from and that crap is getting rejected and pushed to the spot market therefore increasing volumes on the spot market within the next three to seven days so right away we can say california i know it's very light blue it's only actually 7.45 percent rejection but the volume kind of compensates for that. Pendleton, Oregon, over 24% rejection. Twin Falls, Idaho, over 27, almost 28% rejection. The winner of them all, Minneapolis, Minnesota, over 44% rejection, and there is nice volume. And it is surrounded by Iowa and South Dakota, both of which have over 20% rejection. Then we have Green Bay, Wisconsin, almost 14% rejection. We have Madison, Wisconsin, 17% rejection. We have 
Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is right here, 12.33% rejection. Omaha, Nebraska, although the volume is not great, that's at 14% almost. And Joplin, Missouri market, which is at 11.61% rejection. So yeah, with a reefer, I would say try to stick to Idaho, uh, the Pendleton, Oregon market, and then in this area right here, because those markets are pretty good in terms of rejections and volumes, and they're close together so that if you do have to deadhead, you don't have to deadhead very far. Finally, last but not least, dry van, starting with the spot market volumes. So also good news, volumes went up, they're following the five-year pattern, and if this is to be believed, that five-year pattern, we should see a decrease next week in volumes, because of Labor Day, followed by a quick recovery and then kind of stability until Thanksgiving and then an increase towards the end of the year. Now, in terms of spot rates for dry vans, those also saw a tiny little increase. Currently, they're at around $1.90 per mile, whereas we should be at around $2.20 per mile. So not great at all. We are sort of following that five-year average, not as closely as with the volumes, but if it is to be believed, we should see a little bit of an increase in rates, followed by a decrease, stability, and then an increase towards the rest of the year. So let's take a look at the volumes for dry vans. Yikes. So not a pretty picture. For the most part, there were decreases in volumes across the board in the general freight market for dry vans. There are some random places, Colorado, parts of California, South Dakota, Lincoln, Nebraska, Tennessee, McAllen, Texas, I believe this is. Uh, we have West Virginia, Tennessee, I said, Buffalo, New York. But yeah, for the most part, dry vans saw a decrease in general freight volumes. What about rejections? Well, with rejections, it's interesting. The West Coast kind of died. There was either no change whatsoever, I'm not even going to count this, or there was a decrease, right? But New Mexico saw a little bit of an increase. Montana, which is surprising. South Dakota, North Dakota. Illinois, which is nice. Arkansas, Tennessee. Virginia, Pennsylvania. Michigan, Iowa those saw an increase in rejections. But that doesn't mean that these are the places you need to go next week. Before we look at that, let's take a look at the spot market as of today for dry vans. Well, it's definitely not as interesting as for the reefer. We can see that Southern California is still tight, but a reminder, surrounded by loose markets, which means that deadheading trucks might screw the whole situation up. Then we have Dallas and Houston also surrounded by cool markets. I would say that currently, as of today, the safest bet is the Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana area. But where do you have to go with a dry van next week in order to grab better opportunities? First, we have California, which is from 3.47 to 4.27% rejection. Warning, spoiler alert. The dry van rejection rates are nowhere near the reefer ones, so just take it relatively, right? Anyway, California, yeah, the rejection is not great, but there is volume there. Then we have the Houston, Texas area, which has 4.95% rejection and good volume, 14.19% uh, rejection in Green Bay, Wisconsin, 7.09% rejection in Memphis, Tennessee. Then we have this area, which is the Midwest, North kind of. Um, these places average around 7% rejection, which is, I mean, relatively okay. We have 7.31% rejection in Buffalo, New York. And finally, 11 to 20% rejection in the West Virginia um, state, not market, it's a state. Uh, but the thing is, there is no volume there, so be careful. So with a dry van, I would actually recommend going from places like Houston to this area, because again, the rejection might not be amazing, but these are places that are close together and these places average 7% rejection. Um, I wouldn't really risk going to West Virginia just because of the low volume there. So in general, we can comfortably say that over the past few weeks, the market conditions have been steadily, slowly improving from the increasing volumes, the increasing 
tender rejections, and decreasing capacity week over week. These are even starting to translate to the spot market like they should because we are starting to enter into peak season. And while I do believe peak season will be muted this year, it doesn't mean that it's going to be flat. I still believe there is going to be some positive effect that comes from peak season. However, we cannot forget that diesel prices are making things much less interesting. And the biggest problem is that, yeah, the market conditions are slowly improving, but the rate at which diesel is going up is much faster than the rate at which the rate per mile is going up. So it kind of offsets all of that progress. And for flatbeds that are seeing a decrease in the rate per mile week over week, it's yeah, it's not great. But hey guys, I encourage you to celebrate the positive news, the fact that the market is starting to do something good for a change. Anyway, I hope this information was helpful to you. I hope it provided you with some insight on how to fine tune your operations for next week. I'm wishing you all a wonderful weekend. And for those that are joining me this Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, I'll see you guys then. See you in the next video.